Yeah, Stretfest really came uh, out of a, a connection with Brighton where they had a festival and they wanted to get the children involved, so they created the Children's Parade. And I was in a samba band where we did a lot of outreach work and we trained them in drumming, dance and visual making. And we started with only 50 children on the first uh, Friday, Saturday in May and it grew to around 5,000 this last May. So that was some of the original ideas to bring that into Stretfest 2022. Yes, Church Stretton's in the south of Shropshire, nice rural community. I haven't had an awful lot in the sense of a festival or in parades. So I think the idea was to really try and bring something post-pandemic to the streets of Church Stretton and get all the community involved if we could. So the idea was to have more of a grassroots feel where we've got local performers performing for local community. And the idea is to empower those workshop leaders, artists, to run events in the community so that the public can get involved and bring their families and have a fantastic day out. So first of all we spoke to the heads of the schools and they were particularly encouraging us to come in and show the children what it was about. So we did a, formed a little demo band and we performed in the school assembly to show the children what this concept would be like, part of it anyway. And then the idea would be to set up workshops and run those through the months coming up to the parade. We also wanted to train up local artists in how to produce carnival arts, which is bigger and different for the usual artwork. And we brought in a specialist from the West Midlands, Gary Jones, to help us with that. Yeah, so today is um, we're getting ready for the carnival, which is on the 16th of July. And this is me showing people how to make some stuff out of scraps to make beautiful um, in the streets and everybody will be applauding and shouting and saying how wonderful we all are. We're trying to be sustainable and friendly to the earth and most of this stuff would go straight into landfill and end up in the oceans or whatever. But we're giving it, we're trying to give it a bit of life. Decorating these sticks that will then go on to become um, a carnival backpack. 16th of July, 2022, beautiful day, scorching sun, perfect for a uh, Brazilian samba parade, I think. And we ran some workshops in the morning, particularly dance, which was high energy to get people involved in movement. And then we put the parade on the street. So that lines up with um, the eco message we want to get across, the drummers, the dancers and lots of people holding banners. So that was the idea of that. And then we then in the afternoon held more music workshops. So the idea was to come and try, come and try something you haven't done before. We wanted to reach out for this festival and bring more of a multicultural aspect to the streets. And one of my influences was Brazilian Samba, which is really street music played in the neighborhoods, the favelas of, of uh, Rio de Janeiro and so on. And it's highly accessible, a lot of fun, a lot of energy, great dancing. And people like that kind of music. It gets them dancing and moving around. So that was one of the concepts we wanted to try and test out this year in a pilot. I found it absolutely magical, you know, because it's on a scale and with a real heartfelt message and so many people put in lots and lots of energy and lots and lots of creativity into beautiful sculptures, and, you know, huge puppets that take three, four, five people to work and this wonderful music that gets me dancing like nothing else, you know, and dance for me is real self-expression, liberation in the moment, you know, there's no, and it's freestyle. There's loads of people on the street. I mean, I live, uh, how long, 40 miles, 50 miles away, um, in the hills in mid Wales. But, um, you know, I've come up for this. I can see what it does for the community. And it was lovely to see so many people on the street. It must bring people into the area to Church Stretton for the day, I hope. You know, your, your flyers are out and it, it's in, broadsheet magazine and it's here, there and everywhere. So I hope that's important. You know, it brings the town a bit of trade, a bit of fun, a bit of life. You know, this is fabulous. 
Dretfest is a first attempt uh, introduced this year to try and bridge um, the, between here and the festival with a fringe festival, which will be directed at young people, families, and getting young people and families involved in their kind of culture. Oh, I've enjoyed it immensely, and the weather has been good to us. Um, and uh, yeah, it's immense, it's great fun, and the parade was great fun, and colourful and noisy. Yeah, it's been great. We came down um, just to have a look, and then we got um, asked to sort of get involved in the parade, and we were waving around butterflies, and yeah, it was really nice. It's just great to see local people getting together and something happening in town. It's been really good, so yeah, it's been lovely. I think it was very nice, it's quite different, you know, very environmentally yeah. focused, which is nice. Uh, yeah, it's good to see that actually, you don't really see that. So we've had some really positive feedback on the day and since then, which has been really nice to hear how people enjoyed the event. Uh, the ideas have gone to our forum to look at and we've held a review already and there are some lessons to learn, particularly about better communications. But I think from there, if the forum wants to take it forward, there could be some initial plans made for 2023 and beyond. And we would like to extend it to the wider community. Some of the lovely villages around Church Stretton could get involved as well. Um, one of the big things that keeps coming up is publicity, getting so that you get more people on the street. It, uh, so we've got, to, we've got to tackle that. And we want to reach out to all parts of the community, on the, all the villages and even beyond. So we've got something here to, to showcase. I mean, it might be nice if some bands were there, but um, that kind of thing. But other than that, Oh, I could get other stuff to do as well, like, I don't know, get a little, like a tournament area. Yeah, like a football game or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Like, um, I don't know, um, yeah, just a tournament game. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if the, if the, um, the flyers and things said something like, chance to dance, step out behind your screens or, or something, you know, I, I, oh, that's a personal view, you know, and it, I mustn't, um, as we said in the 60s and 70s, lay my trip on everyone else, you know, but actually they'd all feel much better for it. I'd like to thank, particularly for Stretfest 2022, all our wonderful sponsors. They've been generous and very supportive in their um, assistance they've given and the financial support which would made which made uh, Stretfest possible. And of course, it, none of this would be possible without the fantastic work of the Stretfest team uh, from Noel Beatty downwards. We've had some great support, you know, arranging things like road closures and the police and first aid. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes which you don't see when you see a parade. You think, oh, that's great, but actually a lot of things have to work behind the scenes. So I want to thank everybody for making a massively big effort. I also want to, thought, want to thank uh, Finn Middleton for his great work in filming in the schools and for being out on the streets and I really hope it's going to help his Duke of Edinburgh award go through smoothly. Uh, couldn't have done this without you Finn.